Hi, and welcome to my presentation on generating IPA phonetics for Persian words based on phonetics of other languages. But what this is used for? I'm interested in Persian speech synthesis, and one of the obstacles is that there is no good data set to train such systems on. The first thing that is required for such systems is obviously how words are pronounced. To do this, I use the IPA, inter IPA or International Phonetics Alphabet, which is a well-adopted way to represent these pronunciations. My project's goal is to extract ex Persian words pronunciation from audio files, instead of entering them one by one, which is an error-prone and tedious task. But the problem of lack of good dataset still remains. To solve this, I'm leveraging the similarity between English and Persian phoneme. By training on English audios with corresponding IPAs, I'm hoping that the train system will also do well in Persian audios. With this introduction, let's dive into the technical details. In my presentation, I will not enter the details of the coding part. I will make a dedicated video for that and link in the description. Also, the dataset gathering part was simple web crawling. You can see my, the code of my project on my GitHub page, but I will not discuss them here. Okay, let's start with how we hear. After all, many of the AI and machine learning methods are modeled based on how we do things and understand the world around us. The sound itself is a waveform. Then when we when this waveform enters the ear canal, um, it is somehow pre-processed before getting to the internal muscles and bones that actually do the hearing. Uh, some of the frequencies are heightened and some of them are filtered in a non-linear manner. Because of this non-linearity in filtering and also the non-continuity of the signal when we are windowing it, which I will explain a little bit later, the Fourier transform is not the best feature to use. The male scale, on the other hand, have better features and is more closely related to how we hear. So instead of using the original waveform, we use the male frequencies, uh, also known as male frequency cap stroke coefficient or MFCCs for short. To extract the MFCCs, we first window our, our waveform. In the case of my project, I used 8 millisecond windows lens. Then the MFCC for each window is calculated. Depending on the resolution required by the problem, you can increase or decrease the number of these coefficients. In the case of my project, I only used 20 coefficients, which is um, a common number in audio uh, recognition task. Um, these frequency coefficients over time becomes like a matrix, which differs in size because the audio input files has different length. Um, in average, for my data set, the matrices were around 120 time steps by 20 um, MFCC coefficients. Um, but research has showed that um, there are other useful features that we can add uh, to the data set to increase the accuracy of speech recognition task, and that is the derivative or delta of the MFCC coefficients and the derivative of derivative or the delta delta of the MFCCs. Um, Effectively, after adding the delta and the delta delta, the data becomes a 3D tensor, much like a multi-channel image. And thus, we can use the conventional uh, layers of a neural network to extract local features across, across time and frequency coefficients, and then using a series of recurrent network, uh, convert the sequence of convolved MFCC into a sequence of IPA symbols. Um, there is one complication that I haven't mentioned yet, and that is phoneme have different length. Even in the sample of the same speaker, um, different phoneme, even the same phoneme may have different length. And we cannot classify each one of the RNN inputs independently because of this, because uh, a series of um, these um, convolved MFCCs has to be grouped to make a single phoneme which correspond to a single letter in the alphabet of IPA. Uh, but the training data that we have lacks the segmentation of input to output. Um, to overcome this problem, a special loss function was derived by Alex Grave et al. Uh, that is called the Connectionist Temporal Classification or CTC for short. Um, the details of this long func loss function are beyond the scope of this presentation, but I strongly recommend everyone who wants to do automated speech recognition to read this paper. 
In short, the CDC maximizes the probability of the output, output sequence with a differentiable function that can be used later on to backpropagate the loss in the network and uh, effectively train the neural network. Uh, the only limitation of this long function, loss function is that the output length must be less than the RNN input length. And this is a critical point. Uh, the output length should be less than the RNN input length, not the length of the matrix that has been inputted to the convolutional layer. Um, since I use the convolutional layers in my network, my input length shrinked. In some cases, the input of the RNN layer uh, was shorter than the output sequence, leading to error during the training. Um, a part of my effort was to balance a trade-off between the number of convolutional layers, the number of filters, and the size of the filters, and then the max pooling, um, but also choose a window length and also an RNN size for each layer and also the number of layers. And the last but not least, I had to prevent overfitting by the network. So the points that I had to consider were as follow. Um, the more CNN layers um, led to better accuracy and faster learning because um, they could they could find better uh, pattern across time steps and also MFCC frequencies. But the problem with that, if for example I use five convolutional neural convolutional layers. Um, to make sure that I comply with the condition of the CTC loss function, I had to drop almost 70% of my training set to prevent um, training errors. Um, on the other hand, the lower um, convolutional layer count led to slower training and less accuracy. Um, after um, testing different configuration, I came to this conclusion that three convolutional layers um, is the best choice for my model. Um, the window size also was a hyperparameter of the whole model. Um, the larger the window size was, it allowed for the larger number of convolutional layers. But um, the point to be considered here was that uh, by increasing the by, de by decreasing the size of the window, um, the training set and the size of these matrices increment. Um, very fast and uh, at some point we even with um, a window of five milliseconds it was infeasible to train the network um, i tried different uh, number of layers of rnn as well as um, gru's and ns lstms with unidirectional and bidirectional uh, mode the best performance I achieved was when I used two layers of bidirectional LSTM with 1,000 and 400 neurons respectively. And to prevent overfitting, I used a dropout with a dropout rate of 0.7. Um, because my model is large, the L1 and L2 regularization did not uh, work as expected, even with a very slow lambda coefficient in the range of 10 to the power of minus 10, um, the network simply didn't converge. Finally, it took, um, after selecting all of these hyperparameters, it took almost four days for the final model to train with um, 20, 23 iteration. And I use early stopping um, not on the time that the validation loss started increasing, but the other metrics that I was considering was the edit distance between the true label and the predicted label by the neural network. As soon as this metric started increasing, which was a better indication of um, the result that I was looking for, I stopped the training of the model. Okay, now that we have a model, let's see how it performs on the test set. Um, as you are seeing, this is the primary output of the neural network, which consists of um, the word, the true um, label for that word, the best prediction of the neural network and its um, uh, edit distance to the true label, the second best prediction and its edit distance, and the third best prediction with the um, edit distance of it to the true label. 
uh, we can draw a confusion matrix between uh, how, which character has been uh, which uh, symbol of the IPA alphabet has been correctly detected by the neural network um, you are looking at a normalized version of it as you can see most of the intensities are around the diagonal which is which indicates that a correct classification has occurred but there are some uh, uh, parts of the confusion matrix that um, has been constantly wrong uh, but when you consider the frequencies of these uh, errors you can see that um, when the confusion matrix is plotted based on their frequencies all of the intensities are located on the diagonal um, that means that although in some uh, phonemes there are confusions uh, by the neural network but it seems that those phon phonemes are extremely rare in the data set uh, in terms of the best prediction edit distance, um, more than half of the um, items of the test set has been correctly predicted by the neural network and more than 80% of uh, the outputs have at most one edit distance to the true label. Uh, there are uh, some rare cases that um, there exist uh, even up until 12 um, units for the edit distance uh, but these words are words that are even difficult to um, hear by the humans especially for those who are non-native English speaker like auctioneer um, it is understandable that the neural network may have some difficulty to understand it uh, with this, I conclude my project for the Advanced Machine Learning course taught by Professor Jeremy Bolton. And you can also see the code completely on, you, on uh, GitHub that I will also post in the description of this video. Thank you for uh, watching this presentation.